Ken Schultz with Global Strategies. We're the natural search agency for Intel. So I, I spend most of my days in the mountains of, of Bend, Oregon, thinking about how to help Intel show up in, in Google and, uh, and make an impact on, on Intel's business. So with that introduction, and, and I just want to say, and this has been a, a, a fantastic relationship with, for us at, at Intel. And over the last over five years now, I've, I've worked with Laura uh, at, at Intel and helping the digital marketing team there to embed SEO best practice within that enterprise. And I've learned through that process a lot about how SEO is more than just kind of the nuts and bolts of SEO. When you're doing it at this kind of scale in the enterprise, it's really kind of about influencing people, winning friends, it's about enterprise change management, and some of those things that some of the other speakers this morning have, have talked a lot about. And uh, what was cool this morning is seeing some of the, the discussion around some of the, the new features in the Bright Edge tool around page level reporting and some of these kinds of capabilities that we've been doing at Intel for a while. And I, I'm going to show you some real specific examples and case studies of, of how we've done some of these kind of things to, to tell the impact stories and how we've used some of those kinds of tools in, in our opportunity analysis stuff. So we'll look at just a little bit of background about kind of what we were faced with uh, five years ago when we started how we go about doing opportunity assessment at Intel, how we close the loop and measure the impact of, of the campaigns and those efforts and how much the impact of natural search had on those, uh, on those campaigns. And I'll share a few little detailed tripwire things that we uh, learned uh, kind of the hard way along the way and, uh, and then summarize. So in terms of background, uh, over the last, uh, since the start of the central SEO program was established in 2008. We've had annual average growth in natural search of over 20%. And today, more than half of all of the referrals to Intel.com come from natural search. And there's a little bit of background uh, about Intel as a company and the situation there from uh, digital. It's over 600 domains, more than 20 different countries or uh, languages around, around the globe. And as a business, uh, Intel's products are essentially ingredients. So Intel processors, the Intel inside. Uh, so it, we're not conducting any commerce on the site. There's no revenue generated directly from Intel.com. It's all through channels and, and OEM partners. So, so that's a factor affecting how we look at performance that we'll see in a minute. And we're also dealing with multiple audience segments. So we have products for consumers. We have uh, business, uh, business to business audience, the IT decision maker. We have products for embedded systems developers and, and uh, uh, those uh, software developers as well. So we're dealing with lots of different kind of competing interests and audience types. Uh, from a high level, our marketing goals are to grow awareness of Intel, our brands, products, and technologies, to build preference in those products and technologies, and to drive purchase intent. So we use engagement metrics as a, essentially a proxy to the value of our effort to the business, rather than looking at, at revenue, which, as I mentioned, we don't have those direct revenue uh, metrics tied to any activity online. So. When we first got brought in as a consultant to meet with, with Intel, I had this you know, feeling that someone had seen a pie chart that showed that natural search represented about 25% of the referrals to Intel and said, hey, that looks important. Do we, what's our SEO program? And at that point, there really wasn't one. And that, I think that that kind of inspired the interest in bringing us in. It's 25% of our referrals. Maybe we should have an SEO agency. And that, that's kind of how we got, how we got started. And it gave us the opportunity to kind of come in and, and help Intel establish a more strategic approach. And some of the things that we found as challenges is massively decentralized content ownership. Lack of standardized templates is kind of an understatement. Uh, lack of any templates, I guess, with, you know, in some cases was, was more an issue. Multiple CMS platforms, if there were CMS uh, platforms even in existence. Uh, massive infrastructure issues, massive duplication of content, tracking IDs, and redirect issues. And uh, it, was a, a whole, it, was, it was like a, uh, a festival for an SEO. <laughs> there was so much to do. It was, you know, it was, a, it was a cool op opportunity. There was almost no place, you know, was, anything we do was going to help. Uh, and real level, level awareness of the value of SEO, as, as, as Laura mentioned. And where we are today is, you know, we, and we use this kind of uh, philosophy, I guess, uh, around Intel and kind of this mantra in all the meetings we go to that SEO is not something you do. 
SEO is what happens when you do everything else right. So our job and, and with Laura's leadership and help really is, is through evangelism and training and meeting with all of these different constituent, uh, both internal and external stakeholders throughout corporate marketing and digital marketing and agency partners and there's sole slews of those and country stakeholders and then the IT group and social media and PR and all of those people are responsible for SEO. And uh, th this morning I overheard somebody asking someone else at a table how, many, how big their SEO staff was. And I thought, mm, that's an interesting, interesting question. At, at Intel, there's not a, a huge staff of dedicated SEO uh, team members. Laura has SEO as part of her job function. Aside from that, SEO is really a responsibility of people involved in all of these different areas of the, co of the company. And that's part of the, the approach that we have is to make sure that SEO is really embedded as a fundamental process of how we conceive, create, publish, manage, monitor, measure our content online. So everybody, everybody's job. So by that measure, the SEO team at Intel is gigantic, hundreds of people. And five guiding principles that we follow um, and I'm going to focus the rest of the presentation on two of these, but I wanted to give you the context of kind of that full picture of, of what we use as kind of our, our founding kind of guiding principles. And, and one is that SEO is not an afterthought. So SEO is not a verb, we, let, we like to say as kind of a catchphrase. We don't want people creating content and then bringing it to the SEO team and saying, I need you to SEO this, this content. We want to get in front of that. Uh, content creation as much as possible, which brings us to the second principle that the land of opportunity or aligning content with the interests of searchers and balancing that with the interests of the brand. So using search as an insight as early as possible in the content creation process. And I'll, I'll take you through a very specific example of how we've done that in one of the campaigns uh, recently at, at Intel. Then the, the second, give the engine what it wants, so making sure that, that we create content aligned with searchers' interests, but we're laying it on top of optimized infrastructure and in good templates and that, all of that good stuff. And then the gift that, that keeps on giving is about scale. And we, we're using the, uh, what, what do they call it now, the exper uh, Web Experience Manager, what used to be CQ5 uh, is the, the, uh, the CMS, and we've leveraged that to help us implement SEO best practice at scale. So every piece of content that gets pushed out is, follows at least a certain minimum standard. And that's, that's that sort of scale effort using technology to do that. And this last piece will focus on another specific example around closing the loop and monitoring uh, what our stakeholders care about, reporting on the impact of, of our efforts. So with that as a setup, so ta looking at opportunity assessment, we, we kind of break this up into these three key buckets. So looking at customer insights, how is our audience looking for information that relates to us, what products are they looking for, what problems are they, are they trying to solve, uh, what, uh, how, what kinds of keywords do they use when they do those sorts of searches, market insights, what do they find when they land on the search results page, who are the domain authorities that they're finding, what kinds of sites are they getting those answers from, what share of that market do we, do we have? Where do we stand? Where do our OEM partners and our channel partners sit within that, that market uh, when we're looking at a, new, at a new topic area? And performance insights, so looking at how, have, uh, how has our content performed historically in both paid and natural search and using the integration of those data points to help drive kind of new insights and, and uh, new areas. So we'll go through some of the kind of specific cases of how we do that exactly. And, uh, looking at it as a kind of a five-step framework, we start by bringing a keyword landscape through a categorization process, grouping those keywords by topic, prioritizing the, the relevant topics, and drilling down into subtopics to really get at the, where the opportunities are for, uh, for new content or refreshing existing content or expanding our paid search efforts, and then integrating our performance data to really understand kind of what that existing uh, performance can help us to uncover new opportunities and then taking action against that. So this is an example from our IT decision maker audience and looking at a big keyword landscape across a variety of topics and one of the biggest areas here is in threat management, stuff related to antivirus and data protection, cloud computing, and we get at this level this kind of just assessment of the sizing of the market opportunity around these different high level topics that IT decision makers care about. 
this particular campaign, our interest is around cloud computing. So we want to uncover what about cloud computing are IT decision makers interested in. So as we break out and categorize the, the keyword landscape across these subtopics, we get kind of general, undefined, unqualified terms like cloud computing or the cloud and those kinds of words that make up a big piece of that pie. And then you get the qualified things that indicate more kind of refined interest around as a service, like software as a service and platform as a service and cloud security and so on. And this gives us a much better idea of kind of where the alignment is between our messaging goals and where Intel's technology advantage is in relation to the interest that our audience has and helps us to prioritize where we want to go. Then when we bring in our paid and natural search performance data and lay it on top of that demand data. So we've got demand in the back, looking at those subtopics and the gray bar being demand. And then we've laid on a second axis the paid and natural search performance data on top of that. So basically, when the blue and red bars are tall in relation to the gray bar, that means we're doing well in relation to the demand. Where the blue and red bars are small in relation to demand means an area of opportunity, potentially. So the as a service category, we've got a big amount of demand, very little performance there. So this is an area for potentially new content creation or taking existing content and doing a better, uh, better job with it. And in, uh, in, in, increasing our paid search budget, increasing our visibility there, to basically fill in that gap. We've got great performance around cloud security, strategy-related stuff, architecture-related stuff, but this as-a-service category is a place where we don't have any visibility. The IT decision maker is looking for information around this. That's our audience, so that's, that's bubbled up through this view as a place we want to look at. So then we go through this next step where we take that integrated data and we use this kind of segmented approach to bubble up specific keywords into these four key buckets. So opportunities for new content where we have paid search performance is good, but we've not had any natural search visibility. So we have used insight from paid search to help us identify places to invest in new content creation. And then there's some other areas like uh, refreshing existing content, expanding our paid search efforts, or optimizing our paid search efforts. So there may be some areas where we just don't have any experience at all, and we need to do some testing, and that's that middle area of untested new opportunity areas. So if we focus in on one of those, I'll show you specifically kind of the end of this chain of, of this drill path, and we end up with these essentially reports of individual keywords by topic and subtopic, and I've, I've uh, blurred out some of the specific Intel performance data around the natural and paid search uh, data, but these are words that bubbled to the top as having good engagement in paid search and low levels of natural search referral that have bubbled up to the top as opportunities for new content. And specifically around cloud security, I'll take you through next how we looked at the performance of a page created to basically address this opportunity. So I love this quote from Winston Churchill about performance, essentially. However beautiful the strategy, you should occasionally look at the results. And I, I like to uh, approach kind of the me measurement of these kinds of programs uh, using that, that thinking. And, and the best practices that we follow in, from a reporting standpoint are measure what our stakeholders care about. And I can't state that enough. It's like if we're reporting on performance and it maybe it looks good and everything, but it's not what our stakeholder cares about, then it really doesn't, doesn't matter. So that's like point number one measure what our stakeholders care about, use this monitoring to identify what's working, find out why, missing bullet here, take credit for it, <laughs> then do more of it. And, and I'm only sort of half joking about that because you know, the more credit you've taken for the impact, and you know, I mean, take credit for stuff that you know, should be true, but that equity uh, in authority essentially gives you the ability to influence more people in, in your role as a change management agent in the enterprise. We don't really have our hands on any of the levers at, at Intel. We have to get things done by influence. So take credit for it. That helps us to influence the people we need to pull those levers for us. OK, so looking at, uh, I'm going to take you through kind of a, a a philosophy or approach to how we measure the total impact of natural search uh, around both uh, pages and, and campaigns and use a specific example here. I'll, uh, I'll talk through these points as we look through this build. So taking this cloud security page the and, and wanting to 
the reason that we started to, to take kind of this, uh, this, this approach that I'm going to show you it is at Intel there is very, as, as uh, Laura mentioned, a out, very data-driven, outcomes-driven kind of organization. And, and as we're launching campaigns, we were pressed with, okay, I want to report after one week. What's the impact of this campaign from a natural search standpoint? I'm like, whew, wow, okay, one week. That's going to be tough for us to show. Uh, uh, results from natural search. So that led us to, all right, how do we find some things we can report on that have happened in natural search that are related to this campaign that helps us to kind of tell that story of impact. And one is that the story begins with natural search to our target keyword. So if we look at that, we see, all right, we've got some natural search for our target keyword for cloud security, but that's just a smidgen of the total story of the impact of this, of this page. When we bring in staying at this page, looking at referrals from other keywords, then we have more than doubled the impact that we're looking at. When we bring in referrals from keyword unavailable, and this is looking at results for this page over the last, over the last year, then we're up again, almost double again, as the, the impact of keyword unavailable is really hiding a lot of the information from us about uh, the impact of our program. So it's really important to see the impact from a page level. And this last one is really important for us as a, a critical part of every campaign as we're launching new assets and the urgency around performance results really quickly led us to thinking, all right, we've got to take some credit for natural search or show the impact of natural search, but for a page that may not even be indexed yet. So how do we do that? Well, we leverage the interest through natural search in our brands and our technology. So basically bringing people to these campaign assets from pages that get a lot of traffic from natural search and reporting on those as indirect views from visits that originated with natural search. Take more credit and show the total impact more uh, effectively for the whole campaign. So in the total, we see a much bigger impact than any of those uh, individual measures. And how that looks if we take an entire campaign. So that was an example from an individual page. And we aggregate those for collections of pages that make up campaign, campaign assets, essentially. And these are usually a few dozen to 50, 60 assets associated with a campaign. This is a results for big data campaign over the last year, where we've laid in three different types of natural search referrals. The dark blue is direct views from natural search. So somebody goes to Google, they enter the keyword big data our unstructured data analytics, uh, keywords that we rank for, they land on one of our big data assets that generates one of these dark blue views. Somebody goes to Google and enters the keyword Intel, comes to the home page, and then navigates at some point during their visit to a big data asset, that creates one of those light blue views. So those are those indirect views that we talk, talked about. The green on top is somebody that came through on one of those blue views and then they looked at another big data page, so that generates subsequent views, essentially, of campaign assets. So those are the total views of the campaign assets. And laid on top of that on the second axis is the engagements that, were, that resulted from those views. So that's the red line. So we get in one picture a view of the success of that campaign over the last year and driving both engagements and, and the views that resulted in that. And one of the things we do is look at, kind of peel, peel this back. And each month, we meet with the campaign stakeholders to look at how each page is performing across all of those different metrics. So looking at direct views, looking at which pages earn their own views, which pages rely on, on cross-links from other parts of the, of the site to, to generate their views, which ones receive their views from other big data pages, and so on. And we look at that as well at the keyword level. We trend that data to look for stories that tell us what's happening that we need to care about. This example, this fourth keyword here, you see that the third month goes almost to, to nothing. Uh, and, and that's a, one of the sort of, uh, yeah, Intel is not real fond of bad news. Um, so I need to look at those things and figure out oh, what happened here. In that particular case, Intel's distribution of Apache Hadoop software came out uh, in the preview two months prior. They launched a micro site, which isn't included in the analytics package. And, and that site took over the, the top ranking for the keyword Intel Hadoop. And that's the, the story behind that. So making sure by looking at, at these kind, this kind of information, knowing what happened, why it happened, you know, this is sort of the opposite of like 
you know, taking credit for it. We, we didn't, uh, uh, we weren't responsible for that, but I, uh, you know, give, having some actionable recommendations associated with that. There's another cool example in here of where Google changed the way they were doing uh, suggestions for keyword refinements against unstructured data analysis and unstructured data analytics that shifted the referrals from one of those keywords to the other, and two of those are, are, uh, are in there, and that's sort of some of the kinds of things that we look at to tell the story of what's happening in a campaign and what to do about it. And then laying on top of that, the engagement data that tells us which pages are driving the best visits, and in relation to those visits, what level of engagement are we seeing from those visits as well, so we can take action to improve the the, the, the quality of the page. So it's really more, more than just search. It's, a, all right, we're getting somebody to the page, but what's happening on the page? So the, on -page, you know, the site optimization kind of things. And there's a couple of quick little tripwire things. When we're doing this uh, integration of paid natural search data along with the uh, keyword research data, we're bringing, we're using Google's uh, API to, to get demand for these words. And one of the little tripwires we found is that Google will give us back the exact, exact same demand number for certain kinds of keywords, like all of these keywords for one of our major products, Intel Core i7, Intel with two spaces, Core i7, hyphen, a period, and so on. All of those, Google's demand tool tells you you have a demand of 60,500, which is not true it would inflate the demand in our analysis if we were to accept that. So we have to do some little you know, refinements to make sure that we kind of scrub things, and that's one of those little tripwires to watch out for if you're using Google's API. Another little tripwire, uh, thanks to uh, Google and Keyword Unavailable, is the, you know, the, the increase of Keyword Unavailable has caused, essentially, if all things were, were equal, all keywords are declining, then traffic from all keywords, right? So we take our keyword intel over the last year and see this gradual decline, which people will see, can see this data in charts that, that didn't come from the national search group, may have come from some other parts of the company, right? This will cause widespread panic and all caps emails and text messages on my phone. And so we, tr you know, we need to make sure you have kind of the other side of that, the uh, keyword unavailable, and knowing, knowing that that, uh, you know, the, that can happen. So have the answer there. Look, and then another piece about keyword unavailable, because we're dealing with different audiences at, at Intel, we found that the, uh, the, the impact of keyword unavailable varies widely by audience. And in general, consumer uh, audience is much less affected by keyword unavailable than the IT decision maker audience. And, and in the case of the IT decision maker audience, we have pages that receive 85% of the referrals from keyword unavailable. Uh, on average, it's a 58%, almost 60%, and, and climbing for consumer a little less than, than 50% uh, so far. But uh, so it, it's not safe, I guess, as the, the message to just sort of uh, take a blanket average from the entire site if you're in a multi-audience kind of uh, situation and a, you know extrapolate back your your keyword data because it does vary by page and by audience. And just to kind of su summarize uh, for those five guiding principles again, S SEO is is not something you do. It's what happens when you do everything else right. Uh, make sure it's ne it's not an afterthought. Don't use SEO as a verb. Uh, make sure your content aligns to the interests of searchers, that it sits on optimized templates and, and infrastructure, that you use technology at scale in, in, in for good. Uh, we, we've had that happen, uh, uh, you know, that's the flip side of the scale, is that you can deploy really bad things uh, at scale really fast. And we've, we've done that, learned from those things. We, uh, we went no index, no follow in India for a while by accident, uh, not that long ago. So watch, watch out for those kinds of things. And then closing the loop is just to make sure that you're reporting on what your stakeholder cares about and know what your stakeholder cares about. And again, you know, take credit for uh, stuff that's working because that'll be to your advantage in all your future evangelism and influencing uh, efforts. So with that, I'll hand it back Great. to Albert. Thanks, uh, Ken, Thank for a great, great presentation.